the title was really a, a question for myself as to whether I would need one coming here today, but uh, hopefully not. Uh, I'm here really to introduce myself, uh, Graham Windsor, Environment Agency. Uh, I've somehow managed to get a role of leading our engagement with the construction and demolition sector. Uh, somebody said, there's a nice easy little task, go and, go and talk to them. They're a nice easy group to talk to and 300 plus trade bodies later, uh, I'm still working my way through it. Uh, so my role is really to communicate key issues, our key issues and messages, environmental messages to the industry, but also to enable a two-way flow of communication. Uh, very much understanding your concerns is crucial to uh, developing a good relationship, as much as me explaining how important environmental protection is to you. Uh, so I'm here to engage and to help you, hopefully, improve your already very good, I'm sure, environmental performance. And, and maybe, just maybe, to set a little challenge. Our key messages, I don't think there'll be any surprise there. I don't think they've changed uh, since the agency was started some 16 years ago. Uh, and I don't think they're likely to change any day soon. Pollution prevention, improving compliance, and better management of waste and resources are our key messages. Those are the things we want to work on. Those are the things we're concerned about. Oops, wrong way. Uh, pollution prevention uh, probably remains our number one reason for visiting a construction or demolition site. Uh, particularly where activities occur on or near water courses. There remains great potential for very serious damage from uh, construction and demolition activities. But thankfully, uh, serious incidents are few and far between, uh, thanks to the efforts and growing awareness of site operators. Uh, last year, just to note, we revised and relaunched our pollution prevention guidelines for construction and demolition sites, PPG 6. Uh, so it's specifically for the sector. So if you don't, well, of course, you all know about that and you will study it, I'm sure. So just be aware that's there. We're working at, uh, at more better ways of presenting that, uh, and that will feature uh, in some training now that construction skills are developing. Waste reduction, we want to reduce waste from the sector, just like we do from every other sector. Uh, as it's a corporate priority for us, uh, mainly because the waste stream is one of the largest waste streams uh, that we have in England and Wales. Although waste to landfill continues to fall as recovery and recycling increases, uh, all may not be as it seems, particularly in the world of soils and stones. Uh, ending waste to landfill is a laudable target. You know, I think it's great that we should do that, but realistically, there are reasons why some waste go to landfill. They serve a purpose. So while we have landfill, there will be engineering requirements for excavation material uh, to be used on landfill sites. So whether we'll ever get to zero waste, I think we doubt and doubt whether we need to. To improve recycling and recovery further, we need to get better at segregation, classification, and compliance with standards. Managing waste can be a complicated business. Uh, it's important to us that permits are complied with, that exemptions are correctly in place and not abused. Duty of, the duty of care should mean taking proper responsibility for your waste. And it's important that quality protocols and other industry and product standards are properly met and that quality remains high. Of course, not complying with standards, particularly quality standards, may mean that some people can make more money. They take shortcuts. It may mean they can undercut their neighbour Maybe they're undercutting you. It may mean that you can hide your problematic waste that's difficult to get rid of if you mix it with something that's not quite so hazardous. 
but you risk large fines and potentially imprisonment. And it's work that we're increasingly uh, moving in on now on tackling waste crime and uh, improving compliance. But every time someone fails to meet that standard, it puts legitimate businesses like yours at risk. It undermines confidence in those standards, in those materials. You can't have a badge saying this meets a certain quality when there's so many people out there that are not meeting the quality. People don't trust it anymore if the quality is undermined. And that puts the environment and sometimes lives at risk. Tackling waste crime. Well, last month we published our uh, first annual waste crime report. Uh, and last year we launched an illegal waste site task force. First thing that did was increase the number of wa illegal waste sites we knew about. Uh, so we found 1,100, we know of 1,175 illegal waste sites. And now we found that we're moving actively to close them down as quick as we can. A task force has been put in place. We've employed uh, former police officers and intelligence officers. So we're going through a whole change in the way we tackle, trace, gain, gather intelligence, track down, and carry out enforcement against these sites. The most common waste types found at illegal waste sites, which is why I mention it, construction and demolition waste. 32% of illegal waste sites are managing construction and demolition waste. Last year we stopped illegal activities at 759 sites. So we're not doing bad, but we keep finding more. Waste crime undercuts legitimate businesses, like yourselves, harms the environment and blights communities. It's serious crime and there are now tough penalties. Of course, demolition has a good record here earlier members of the Federation regularly achieve 90, 95% plus recycling and recovery. Fantastic. Be proud of that, but make sure it's real. Increasing quantities of waste materials are being processed into quality protocol compliant non-waste products. Less waste is being produced. Less waste is going to landfill. Registration to recognise environmental management systems is increasing. And of course, I'm talking to the converted here, I know. The best of the best, as we heard earlier. But there is room for, import it for improvement amongst the sector as a whole. When I get told that 32% of illegal waste sites manage construction and demolition waste... I ask myself, well, why does that happen? When I get told that 24% of illegal dumping that the Environment Agency deals with, and we only deal with the, the big serious incidents, not, it's not fly tipping, are construction, demolition and excavation waste, I have to ask, who's doing this dumping? When I get told that Waste Plasterboard is responsible for the deaths of cattle, I think, well, how does that happen? Because Waste Plasterboard shouldn't be used in animal bedding, but it is. Where does the plasterboard go? Sorry, the figures are a bit small there, so I did... Uh, where is it? Plasterboard's an interesting thing that we've looked at, trying to find out where it goes. Actually, we don't recover very much out of the estimated almost million tonnes that gets produced every year. Uh, most of it, again, we have to guess the estimates, but most of it, we assume, ends up in landfill sites. Uh, disposed of as fines, secondary aggregates, and soils. I get told that many 
quality aggregates fail to meet any recognised standard. And I feel really sorry for those that have invested to succeed and make sure they produce the right quality, and that's you guys. They find themselves priced out of the market by criminal operators. And, and I asked somebody to give me a photograph of some, somebody who's producing some uh, aggregate that just didn't quite comply, and they gave me that. And I thought, well, that's a pile of rubble. I said, yeah, but they were claiming it was QP compliant. It isn't, by the way. <laughs> Clearly not one of your members. <laughs> but but, but that, that's the business. That's what's happening. That's what's undermining your ability and the guarantee of the standard when people make stupid claims. And they have been prosecuted. When I get told that inert waste fines contain large quantities of waste gypsum, asbestos, biodegradable waste. What should we think? It's going wrong. Often it's also classified incorrectly. It's often classified as 170504, which you know is soils and stones, and obviously it isn't. A construction company a couple of weeks ago told me when they find that if they find their haulier has been taking their, their excavation waste to an illegal site, they warn them and tell them they won't use them again if it happens again. Well, why not report them to the Environment Agency the first time and strike them off straight away? Why risk it? <coughs> well, it's not all going wrong. Quality aggregates can be produced. They are produced. Quality aggregates have a higher value. So why should we strive for anything less than the best? 28% of aggregate production in the UK comes from recycled or secondary sources. Fantastic. And waste to landfill is falling. <coughs> On the quality side, we heard earlier. It's quality that sets the Federation members apart from the rest. Now, I know it's not you. But if you know who it is, let me know. What do we want you to do? Well, keep being the best. Another message earlier, don't gamble. So be prepared. Assess the risks of pollution on your sites. Be prepared to manage incidents and report incidents to us. We get very few incidents reported to us. It's probably because there isn't any. Maybe because they don't get reported to us. Make sure your own activities comply with regulations and uh, with a nod to the new guide the, 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 the Federation has produced guidance which we've inputted to and commented on on compliance with permits and exemptions so that will be out shortly uh, segregate your waste simple tip good waste segregation and correct labelling is key to high quality waste recovery and recycling better quality outputs achieve higher recovery and earn you more money simple messages ensure your hauliers are registered waste carriers Check where your waste is going. If you're spending more than a couple of grand sending some waste off site somewhere, why would you not spend, I don't know, 50, 100 quid, half an hour of your time to drive up the road and check out the site it's going to? Why wouldn't you? Why gamble? Make sure you have the right permissions in place. And don't ignore illegal activity. If you've got information on any serious waste crime, report it. We will take action. Ultimately, they're stealing money from you. So, what oh, stop them doing that? Uh, not just relying on industry, you to do it all yourselves. Uh, we're working closely with construction bodies, uh, improving training, guidance, and hopefully trying to make regulation simpler. Or make it sound simpler, at least. Uh, there's new environmental training as part of GE 700 with construction skills. Presumably that will feed through to your skill, your schemes. Uh, EDOC, if you haven't heard of that, is Electronic Duty of Care, which will be launched in 2014 to replace some of those mounting piles of waste transfer notes. 
but also to provide essential and more accurate data for those planning waste infrastructure and needing to know where waste is really going. Uh, we're currently re consulting on a replacement for our popular developer's guide. Uh, it's one of the most popular documents on the construction demolition part of the website. Uh, it is for designers, but also for the whole construction de demolition chain. Uh, and that's been uh, put together this time between the Forestry Commission, National in Natural England and ourselves. So that's an interesting guide to look at. Of course, we welcome the opportunity to have some input to the Federation's guidance, which will come out shortly. And I, I welcome the opportunity to work closer with you uh, to see how we can recover materials better and improve the quantities that we recover. Uh, and I welcome the opportunity to help stamp out crime. And waste construction demolition, crime, is going to be a major campaign for us uh, next year. So uh, we'll, we'll be looking for effort, we'll be looking for input, we'll be looking for intelligence, find these sites, shut them down. And thank you for inviting me here today. Thank you.